What's up guys? Today we're going over all the gear that I used the most in 2020. It's this mess back here behind me. So we're gonna, not all of it, but we're gonna go over the stuff that I used the most. This may not be the last video for 2020, but with quarantine, might as well shoot a video and have some fun. So stay tuned. Your copyright infringement today is gonna be brought to you by Get Dead. The band's newest album is Dancing with a Curse. Amazing, probably my favorite. Favorite or next to favorites? Top two, top two release uh, of the year. So uh, enjoy it in the background why they slap me with a copyright infringement. Stay tuned. All right guys, how's it going? We're about to get into all this EDC gear, but first a little bit of uh, housekeeping issues. One, I joke at the beginning of a lot of videos actually, I think uh, about the copyright claims. Just to kind of, I guess, be transparent and um, and clarify I don't get copyright strikes like I'm plagiarizing something when you play the video you get a copyright claim which doesn't go against your channel it just means that you know once we reach the right number of subscribers and can monetize the channel that those videos that have the claims the band gets the the money made from those videos which is fine it's 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 whatever um, speaking of subscribers and um, the channel we've grown the channel to 271 subscribers at the time of making this video which is absolutely amazing I appreciate uh, all the recommendations and all the you know help in getting there uh, it, it definitely takes you guys uh, watching and sharing to, uh, to to help me out and I, I do appreciate that just this month alone we've gained eight subscribers and there's like been like 15.1 thousand uh, minutes of videos being watched from the channel, which is completely, completely insane to me. It's it's really hard for me to believe, but uh, I'm extremely happy and uh, and it's 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 a blessing. So thank all of you guys for uh, for for everything. So we're gonna dive into uh, this EDC gear. This is actually the first video that I'm shooting on my uh, iPhone 12. So we'll get that out of the way. This is the case. Uh, I went with the Apple one. I don't really like the way it looks, to be honest with you but I know that it's gonna put the patina on it. And I think once that, you know, I've had it a while and it, it, it gets worn in, it's gonna be, it's gonna be amazing looking uh, as far as uh, fit and function. It fits really good. It has the MagSafe uh, in it. So you can put like a wallet on it, uh, a charger. Uh, I, I don't know if I'll ever actually use that. I don't, I don't see myself putting a wallet on the outside, especially the Apple wallet, which is like 50 or 60 bucks for basically a card holder slot so I just I don't see that happening but so far I like the uh, I like the phone a lot I came from a 10 so an iPhone X right the original not you know the SE or the 10s or whatever I don't know so it's been like three three four years I think I'm sure someone will correct me in the comments below but it's been three or four years so it was a big jump from that to the 12 uh, the 12 Pro Max it's a massive phone. I like the screen size, being able to watch, you know, YouTube videos or whatever. Uh, it's heavy. Not sure that I like the weight of the phone, but uh, I forgot to charge it the night before last. So I used it all day and it made it to basically last night. Like when I got home, I say got home. Uh, yeah, when I got home last night, uh, I think it was at like 12%. So I got almost two days of battery life uh, from it so that's that's pretty good but that's the uh, iPhone 12 Pro Max and the only reason I did it is because you uh, got a $700 credit when you traded the other phone in so AT&T sucks though there it's they've been a pain in the ass uh, I'll explain that later uh, but yeah the phone is good it's cool I don't know if I can do it now ah, I guess I can we'll, we'll see but it has a 2.5 zoom so you can zoom in or it also has a wide angle which is like 0.5 zoom, zoom out which I don't think any of the other phones have that. Maybe, maybe my other phone had it too, and I just never realized it. But the uh, it seems to be the video video quality is going to be really really good. So we'll go back into One X. So just to get it out of the way, the shittiest piece of gear I added this year uh, for 2020 is the mask. You always got to make sure you have your mask on you, and it sucks. And hopefully they'll go away soon, but I highly doubt it. So next, I'm showing these. Uh, these are my Ray-Bans. These were the ones, and I don't know if I can, if you see all this little, it looks like 
like scratches. All this pieces here, that was the matte material. It got sticky and I tried scratching it off. Um, and I've chipped my lenses a couple of times. But uh, I still wear them a lot. And uh, actually it's the only thing I wear. I bought a brand new pair of these. All right guys, sorry about that, FedEx. But uh, yeah, I bought a brand new pair of these and uh, I don't even wear them that often because it's like I'm afraid I'm gonna drop them and scratch them like I did these. So these are kind of like my throwdowns now. I just wear them pretty much daily. Um, and then if I'm going someplace that's a little nicer, I'll wear the new, the new matte ones that I got. So uh, don't leave these out in the heat because I think that's what happened to uh, the matte finish on those. And then still the Ho Oakley Holbrooks. I mainly use these uh, to like mow the grass and you can see the Cerakote's finally coming off. Uh, but these, man, these have been a, a great pair of glasses and same thing, like you can see, they're all scratched up. Uh, like I said, no grass in them. I plan on replacing the lenses with uh, Fuse lenses, but um, every time I go on the website, the ones I want are out of stock. So I'm just gonna wait and eventually I'll run across them. The lenses are almost as much as the glasses if you go through Oakley, I think it's like, you know, a hundred bucks or something. So next you guys have seen this in many videos, the uh, Benchmade Mini Griptilian with the, I call it the spidey hole. I know it's that's probably not the right name for it, but uh, still just a great knife, sharp axis lock, which I think it's cool. You can flick it out and flick it back in if you need to or, or whatever, however you you decide you wanna flick it. But I like the yellow, the yellow is cool to me. Uh, the, uh, the clip's starting to take a little wear on it, but hey, just shows that it's used. So. These two knives up here are knives that I made. I did videos on them and then scrapped them because it just, it was too much crap to try to deal with. I haven't put handles on it. Maybe when I go to put the handles on it, we'll do a, a video, but these were with a saw blade and basically uh, a Dremel. That's, yeah, so the tempering probably sucks, but it's uh, I got a little bit of an edge on it. So uh, yeah, something I like to get more into just uh expensive and time-consuming hobby so we'll we'll see what happens but uh james avery bracelet got it i haven't been wearing it lately i don't know i just i haven't i've been wearing the uh the gt fo bracelet the glass breaker and if you see today i'm wearing a uh my seiko 5 i don't know if that'll focus in but um the Apple Watch, my Apple Watch, I gave it to my oldest son. More on that in a second. So uh, this, I just put it as kind of a... All right, so I was editing the video and forgot. I never came back around to uh, the pain in the ass, which is AT&T. So this is my Series 1 Apple Watch that uh, I'm giving to my son. You can see he's taking good care of it already. It's not uh, not even charged. But anyway, this is... Uh, they were running a special where it was buy one, get one free. I really wasn't anticipating getting another Apple Watch. I've been looking at the uh, Suntos, I believe that's how you pronounce it, and um, the Garmin's, because I did want another smartwatch. And there's actually some uh, Casio as well that do some of the functions, but I don't think Casio is there yet as far as like, all I really need this thing to do for the most part is when my phone rings or I get a text message to let me know. It's nice, I just, I don't get to work out enough where the workout function is a selling point. When I do run, this is, I guess, so old that you can't make any of those selections anymore. It just doesn't, it doesn't work. So uh, anyway, long story longer, we went up there. My wife, I guess, decided that she wanted one after, you know, four years of saying she didn't want an Apple Watch. And since they were buy one, get one free, I was like, yeah, whatever. If you want one, that's cool. All that, all that, I guess, through AT&T, you had to do the LTE, which I've never had that. So, um... I don't know. That could be cool, I guess, maybe. Being able to leave the uh, phone or the phone um, at home when you go for a run and just take your watch. So we'll see how that works out. But anyway... But anyway, uh, she ordered the silver with the white band, silicone band. It came in and it was white one with some kind of like nylon band. Um, so I took it back up there and they just it took like two hours to get the watch exchanged out. But anyway, they ordered the correct one, took that one, and I went on my way. Then about three days later, mine came in. Lo and behold, same thing. Space gray watch, but some kind of black nylon band. So I took mine up there, 
on like a Friday night to uh, to get it swapped over. They were dead. There was no one in the store. Still spent like over two hours in the store and never got anything resolved. The salesman said that he sold me the right watch, that he was selling me the watch, not the band, which set me off because I was like, you showed me the one with the, the silicone band and I explained to you that that's the only band that I ever wear on mine, even though I've got a leather, you know, nomad band. Why would I want anything different? And the answer was, well, you can just change the band. I'm like, yeah, but the Apple bands are $50, whereas like the cheap Amazon ones, I don't really think they're as good. I had some for this watch and I never used them. I always gravitated back towards this band. So just order me the one that I want. So after another few minutes of uh, him typing away on the computer, he came back and said, okay, well, we can get it ordered, but we need a $600 deposit. And I was like, no. It's like $700 worth of watches that you've already ordered, you messed up, and now you're wanting $600 deposit? I can just buy the watches. Why, why would I put down a deposit and have a contract with you guys for like 30 months or whatever? It's like, the, and if one of them's free, $600 more than covers both watches. I'm paying double. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. So anyway, got the manager. The manager, I guess, fixed it. We'll say fixed it in air quotes because I left there with... The, their system was frozen up. They tried to do something. They tried to, they tried to charge me the taxes on the watch, which was fine. That's I expected that. They refunded me taxes from the other watch, which was like twenty nine bucks, and ran my card for twenty nine dollars. And they couldn't get it to go through. And they kept telling me the card wasn't right. So I spent another thirty minutes on the phone with my credit union, and had the credit union tell them that on their end, they were, that it doesn't even show that the card was running. Lo and behold, their system had frozen and it wasn't actually uh, even attempting to run the card. So they had to put in a ticket and they said they that it wouldn't be done Friday night. They would give me a call. They had my number. That was Friday. It's now Tuesday. So like basically five days and no word at all. Nothing else. So I'm going to call them tomorrow and see if I can uh, figure out what's going on with watch. If not, as far as I'm concerned, they can, they can keep both watches. It's cool with me. No big deal. All right. Back to the video placeholder for the dango belt the dango belt is amazing like i love that thing i wear it every day uh, when i'm wearing pants or even shorts that have belt loops today i'm in like running shorts so uh no uh no dango today but uh that's just a little loop i find myself not using this loop the little key hanger it tends to get in the way so i don't i don't use this but it's a cool little thing they threw in um you guys have seen the video on this one as well, the Gerber armbar. This is for the money. It's it's one of the best multi-tools I think you can buy if you're just gonna have, you know, if you're just gonna have one tool and uh, you don't wanna to spend a lot of money. Like I said, I think this was 20 to $30 thereabouts, but just such a super, super nice tool. Um, now, I guess going into my pick of, if you only have one multi-tool, to me, this is, this is it, the Leatherman Skeletal. Uh, it's basic, stripped down, just the essentials. You have your pliers, screwdriver, knife blade, and then you got a bottle opener here. Like I said, it's not not anything fancy, but it uh, it gets the job done. Um, it's a little more money. You know, this is the Skeletal CX, so I got the carbon fiber inlay, which uh, costs a little bit more. And I think these are probably somewhere between seventy and hundred bucks. You can get them. This one, I think, because I I lost my first one. This one, I think I got it off eBay for like 40 or 50 bucks. Um, and yeah, it's, it's great. Like I, there's, there's no complaints. Um, and you guys have seen this one too, the case knife. I carried this one a lot this year. It was a, a new acquisition. I don't carry it as much as I would like to just because it's, I tend to gravitate towards things with a pocket clip. So it's easy to access for me. Uh, I don't like a whole lot of stuff floating around in my pockets. I don't really even carry change. Like I, if I get change, I'll throw it in a, a bag or put it in a jar or something until I get enough to, you know, go cash in at the bank. But this is, it's great. Beautiful knife. I love the uh, purple scales on it. Uh, it's, it's great. Like I said, uh, I should probably carry it a little bit more than I do. I just, I'm always worried that I'm going to either lose it because it's in my pocket or just bang it up so much that it, it damages it. Uh, but it's, it's a great knife. And then this one, you guys, I know you guys all recognize the uh, C... <laughs> tongue tied there, the CEO by CRKT. This is an amazing knife. The profile is so thin, it disappears on the side of your, uh, your, your, your pants. 
And then when you pull it out, I mean, it's, it's very thin, almost, I always call it like a samurai shape in my opinion. It reminds me of a little samurai sword, but, uh, it, it's not one of those that you pull out like, you know, you're someplace and you pull this thing out and people might take notice a little bit. This is the, the Spider Co. Tenacious. Uh, this is from Blade HQ is where I got this one. This is yeah, just one of my favorite knives of all time. But, uh. This one, if you're, you know, someplace a little, as they say on the office, a little class A, uh, it doesn't really turn any heads. You can pull it out, you know, open a box or package or, you know, cut tape off something and it doesn't really draw any attention. Whereas you bring this hunking thing out and it, it, it does. So, or even this one here, which is the cold steel code four. And what I like about this one, and the reason it's gotten as much carry as it has, it's a huge knife. As you guys see, and I, I mean, I have probably extra large hands for gloves or whatever. It's a big knife, but the profile is so thin that you don't really notice it when it's in your pocket. And it's super light for the size. Like when you look at it, you know, you would think that it would be a uh, heavier. So, but it, it's not. It's it's a. Uh, it's great. We'll see what happens with Cold Steel. I heard they just sold the company, so hopefully uh continues to be a, a great knife maker. I wished uh, a couple things. I wish I could uh, have it a deep pocket carry clip. I'm sure I could buy one, um, and I may move it to the other side. I Even though I'm left-handed, I, I tend to have my knives on my right side, so I pick it up from my right pocket. This is actually set up and I should, this should thrill me, is that it's set up for a left pocket so I could pull it out. But I always, I keep this Olight flashlight in my left pocket. And I, I guess I've gotten, because all my knives are right-handed and I'm so used to that, that I've, uh, I've kind of trained myself to be able to pick it up, open it, and then do any work I need. And most times, especially if I'm like sharpening a pencil, that ends to be like the most I use my knives for the most often is sharpen pencil mainly for the kids but then i can sharpen the knife like this whereas there's no way that i can i can sharpen with my right hand so but that's the uh code four this is the open out this is another one that i don't carry as much as i'd like to because of the same thing with the case except i'm not as worried about damaging it because it is a you know a wood handle i bring this one up because i never got any comments because i think i asked before but I think what I'm going to do is see if I can do some kind of acid etching on the blade and then I'm going to sand the handle down and um, do it like I did the axe here. Let's pull the axe out. See if we can kind of uh, axe hatchet. Sorry, I did an axe as well, but see if we can kind of mimic the handle on that. We'll do some of the burning and then do the lint seed oil to, uh, to coat it. So just basically I'm off for the next three weeks. So just something to do. Maybe we can get some content out. I tend to uh, be a little more active around this time of the year because I have time off and we're in quarantine on top of that. So might as well do something right. Hand sani. The only difference between 2020 and prior years is instead of keeping the hand sani in the car only or on my bag, I keep one in my pocket as well. And this is it's not even what's in it, right? This is just cheap dollar store, 70% um, alcohol hand sani, and it's just something I can keep in my pocket. The uh, Donkey Jeep Fob, you guys have seen it before. Uh, the Olight, this one, before before the Rona hit the US, Olight did a special where it was like a benefit thing, and it was the limited edition, supposedly, with the, uh, the, blue, the blue line. And it was to raise money for COVID stuff. But so I bought it then and this has just been amazing. I, I would like another one. I would like this light with the magnetic tail cap and they may have it. I, I don't really know. Uh, but you have, when you turn it on, it's low and you double tap and it's, you know, the brighter mode. You guys have seen it in previous videos. It's an amazing light. I, I cannot, cannot um, recommend it highly enough. So then for the most part of the year, I carried this, the Hitchin Timber with the Fisher Space Pen, and then I keep my keys in the uh, Key Smart with, uh, this is the Gerber Mullet. 
in all honesty, this pretty much stays in my Jeep at all times. And then I uh, just take it out to check the mail because I go through the garage in my house. So I typically don't, you know, maybe I should, maybe I should lock that door, but typically I don't. I just have the garage and my office pretty much, yeah. And then the mailbox key. So it's mainly for checking the mail. So, and then we get to the Dango, the Dango wallet. It's a great wallet. Um, I am thinking about the one with the pen. The pen that I had in here um, broke. So if you look, even the, the normal, the bullet, even if I had a clip on it, it really, it'll close, but it pushes it out. And I'm not really sure if I'm crazy about that or not. Um, we'll see, but they make a wallet that has a pen integration. Pen is just for whatever reason, something that's really important for me to carry. I don't like using pens when I go places. Uh, the Rona did kind of, I guess, hyper that a little bit, but I've always been that way. So that's the, uh, the Dango Dapper wallet. And I know people have talked crap constantly, not constantly, but quite a bit. This is uh, the everyday carry gun that I that I carry. You see, there's no magazine, nothing in the chamber, safe location. So this is the MNP Shield 380 Easy. I love it. Like it's super accurate. It's probably it's probably in line with uh, the Glock 19 that I had for. Um, for accuracy, you know, for me, the way I shoot it or whatever, but super accurate. The sights, I would like to maybe change, put some true glows or something on there, but the sights aren't bad, you know, uh, round indicator. For me, it's uh, it's ambidextrous. It's got the external safety, which I really wanted, and it has the, uh, the back strap safety as well. I don't really know what it's called, but uh, yeah, so the only thing that's not, um, Ambidextrous is a slide release, which, you know, that's not an issue for me because I've gotten used to use, using my finger and just doing it like this, or I'll just rack it back like that and, and go that, that way. So people are, like I said, have constant, not constantly, but I guess I'm not exaggerating, but like, oh, it's a easy, what are you a woman? Are you old? I mean, my response is it's a 380 and this is just as deadly as any other 380. So uh, yes, the slide's very easy to rack back. Um, it's a little beefier of a gun, I guess. Still very, very concealable, in, in my opinion. Like I said, I carry it uh, in this holster. It's just a, a cheapie from Amazon. It's it's comfortable. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't have any problems with it. I mean, I'm really looking at... I, I still need a 9mm, but, you know, all the shortages have... Uh, it's kind of made it a little more difficult and all the quarantine and everything. So um, I'm thinking about doing the the shield easy in a nine millimeter. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't know why not. I mean, it, it's basically this gun, but nine millimeter. And if it shoots as well and handles as well as this gun, then it's uh, definitely something to consider. So. so now to what I would have to say is the number one best piece of EDC gear that I purchased in 2020 and that's the uh, AirPods Pro. These things are amazing. Like I've never had AirPods before because uh, the way the AirPods were in the past uh, or the regular AirPods or the you know earbuds, earbuds that you get with your phones, they don't fit my ear. They hurt and they end up falling out when I try to run or do anything. This is the first ones they released with the ear pieces, um, little foamy ones or plastic ones. So they fit in my ear really good. Never had noise cancellation headphones before, and that makes a world of difference, especially like mowing the grass or, you know, when I go for a run, I'll typically put it on the transparent mode so I can still hear, you know, the surroundings if, you know, cars coming or whatever. But uh, that's been awesome. And then I got the uh, the iPad Pro 12.9 inch. This, uh, I got it basically for YouTube so I could, you know, do a little bit better editing the videos or whatever. Uh, and with the Apple Pencil. This thing's amazing. What I like about it the most, I can't draw and that really helped out a lot. Procreate. So it's something I was able to take a picture and then you'd basically trace it. So I can trace. Among Us, my son loves that game. But if you're in an app like YouTube and you wanna, like maybe I'm watching 
one of the older videos. Let's see. Pull that out. All right, so what I love about this this app or this app or this iPad, I like the size. It is it's like the size of a piece of paper basically. So it's it's I thought it was going to be too big, but it's been very easy to use. But if I'm working on a video, I can pull this up, the notes. And of course, it's not going to work the way I want it to. Hold on it. Drag it to the side and now I have notes open while I'm watching the videos or whatever. So, and then you can draw straight on here. Let's change this. So maybe we, uh, we don't want to do grid lines. We want to do paper. And double tap the pencil. Erase what we wrote. And yeah, I'm a lefty, so my handwriting's terrible. Tap it, double tap it again. Change back to the pencil. So it's been been very useful uh, with the videos. And then this is where I've been editing my videos as well. So what I'll do is airdrop them from the phone to the iPad and edit edit there. So uh, it's it's been, been very, very, very helpful. Um, and that's really all for the gear that I've been carrying. You know, what I'd say every day, the iPad, I use this at work now to take all my notes at work. And I use the AirPods at work as well when I want to listen to podcasts or... Um, like Sirius XM, stuff that I can't pick up on my computer. Uh, I'll use the Air, AirPods and do it on my phone. And you guys have seen, we switched the uh, to the smaller Maxpedition for the med kit. And then the larger Maxpedition for everything else. Uh, just the stuff that stays in the Jeep. Uh, next, just kind of on a side note, I made this door stop for a buddy that has a, uh, a JK. I left it because I made it too long the first time and now I don't want it to be too short. So I left these as soon as I can. What had happened is, you know how the JKs don't have the door hinges like the JLs, which I actually really like that. I wish the JLs didn't have the door hinges, but um, this will open it, allow his door to open to the first notch on the JL hinge, right? So instead of flinging all the way open, even though you know you have that strap that's like this long that keeps it from going all the way back and hitting the... Uh, the cow, it'll it's still too far and in, in, in his parking situation it's hitting other cars with between him and his, his son. So um we made these. We'll see how see how they turned out. Lastly is I guess bags. So oh, I did switch bottles to a Nalgene, just the 32 ounce, a little bit easier to carry than that huge one I was carrying. Um got the Funk Street commuter bag. This is kind of this isn't a daily carry, I guess, necessarily, because I will typically carry it on the weekend um, or if I'm not at work. The reason being is, like, it's, I live in Texas, right? So it's always hot. Even now, it's December, and it's, like, 75, 80 degrees outside, which isn't not necessarily hot, but it's not a jean weather either, right? Like I'm, like I said earlier, I'm wearing running shorts, so I'm not going to carry the gun in the you know, in running shorts, it's just going to pull my pants down. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll keep it here. I wish this bag was a little bigger so I could fit the, the, the 12.9 inch, the 10 inch would have probably fit. Uh, but I just, I want to use that as like a computer, right? Like I don't, I don't own a computer. So all my videos, everything's done from there. So I wanted the, you know, the largest screen I could have. I haven't really done anything else with this bag yet. So as you can see, I have earplugs when I took it to the range. There's a little mesh pocket here that, uh, if you guys are gonna hear FedEx again, sorry, it's December. Some Advil and a little boo-boo kit. Um, I need to get a tourniquet and uh, some other stuff to go in this bag. But this is like a, a weekender bag. So I'm gonna pause the video so this truck leaves. All right, not sure what happened, but FedEx decided to park in front of uh, my house and open the engine compartment and take pictures of the engine and crawl under it and take pictures. I don't know what was going on. It was running. I don't know if maybe it wasn't running correctly or something. But anyway, that's the Funk Street commuter for a work bag the whole year, practically. I use this here, which is the uh, 
the fossil bag and it's really good bag there's been some wear on it it's starting to get dingy looking i could probably try to wash it I got some uh i guess the pleather is coming off here anyway uh I decided to stop using it about a week ago uh, just to try to, I don't, I don't know, I guess I was bored, right? Or wanted to be able to pack more stuff without it bulging out the way this one does, so. I switched back to the North Face Recon, and you guys have seen this in other videos. This one's also kind of, I didn't really realize it until I got to work. It's kind of dingy as well. But I don't really care. I'm gonna use it for now until I find something else. If you guys have any suggestions, this setup seems to work the best for me. I would like a tablet pack, I guess pocket, a dedicated area for the tablet because it just hangs in the bottom of the bag whereas the laptop suspended, you know? Um, and I would like it to be suspended as well, maybe in a, a separate section of its own, but I like the water bottle pockets. That's the main thing that I didn't like carrying the, you know, messenger style bag. So, and in it, I have my little admin pouch that I carry with a cheap Gerber knife on the outside, but scissors, pry bar, flash drive, uh, a little Swiss Army, nail clippers. These are, these three sevens nail clippers are my favorite nail clippers in the world. They're awesome. And uh, yeah, just stuff I might need at work with the exception of the little uh, fire starter I have. I don't know why I keep it in this pouch, but I do. The Exotac, maybe it probably needs to go in the Jeep to be honest, but. And then more hand sanitizer. I imagine that and, uh, at the top here. Another thing, a hand sanitizer. This is where I will usually store my AirPods and sunglasses. It's a fleece lined. And then here, just my safety rule book. I got an external hard drive in there. The uh, knock around blue blocking, blue light blocking sunglasses. You, If you look at a computer screen all day, those things will like help your eyes amazingly. Uh, stainless steel Sharpie, the Zebra, I think it's F01 or F701, had the 01 right. Uh, and then, uh, I don't think that's a Fisher, I think that's a right in the rain pen. Uh, and then an extra ethernet just in case the Wi-Fi goes out, so. And I think that brings us to the end of the video. Uh, I can't think of anything else I carry. Uh, if you know some, if we get some acquisitions between now and the end of the year, we'll do uh, we'll do another video. Um, if not, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Uh, look forward to a great maskless 2021. But uh, like I said, I highly doubt that's going to happen. But uh, yeah, so that's it. Thank you guys again uh, for everything, uh, all the views and, and subs and sharing and, and everything. So as always, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and comment down below.